first I'm going to show you basic setups. Um, right here, I use this as a rod holder. It's perfect for setting um, setting hooks and for holding multiple poles. You can fish with multiple poles and catch multiple fish at the same time. Um, it just got a basic rod holder for like a boat. It costs about 10 bucks at Walmart or Meyer. I went to Ace Hardware. They hooked me up with some steel pipes and they just welded on a bolt to it. So you can just spike it right into the ground and pop your pole right on there. Um, next, um, I recommend a really good reel when you do it. Um, you want something with really good drag. I bought this on Wish. This reel is a 13 ball bearing. I've had it for months. No issues with it at all. It's perfect. Um, basically using just an ugly stick GX2. It's a nice medium action um, pole. Got some nice spider wire on here. Nice 30 pound braid. It's not going to snap for nothing. Um, I use egg weights. Um, is what I recommend, but today I'm using one pound. Water current isn't that fast. So um, I, you, you want to use your total amount of hooks you can for sucker fishing. You're allowed six hooks per person in Michigan, so um, I'm using three on each pole today. I got a buddy with me, so we're going to be using four poles total, um, three hooks on each pole. Um, you want to put an egg weight sinker right there. No fancy tying knots or nothing, just a basic looping around. It's a little windy, sorry about that. But just tie three, three knots, just right on through, and then again, right on through. Pull it tight, and then make sure you pull your egg sinker down a little bit to tighten the line. Next, you grab one of your three hooks. I just set them up like this so it's easy grabbing. Again, nothing fancy. You don't need nothing fancy for these. Just slide it right on through. Put it about eight inches below that sinker. Oh, I got a hit right over there, actually. Hold on one second. free right now. This is, like I said, it's a white sucker. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit, avoiding to hold its gills. We're going to walk it up to the bucket. Once I get the rinse off, we're going to measure it. It's a nice fat sucker. We're going to pop it in the water bucket. Give it some air. It's been out of the water for only not even a minute maybe. Rinse it off. As you can see, it's a decent size. It's not a monster or nothing, but it's decent. We're going to take a tape measure to it. It's under a Master Angler size. Master Angler for this is 22 inches. And this is 21 and a half. So, like I said, we've only been fishing for maybe 20 minutes now. So, we're going to get our lines back out there and see what we can get. This is the Fisher Brad, and I am back, Sucker Fish 101. So we got interrupted by this guy right here. It's a nice one, just underneath Master Angler. 21 and a half inches. Got him within a couple minutes, maybe 10 minutes or so. Um, so I told you guys about the weight. So you want about a one fifth or a quarter ounce egg sinker, right? So just a basic egg sinker. You can pick them up anywhere at my or Walmart. Um, next, you want about a size two or a size four buck. Um, we're gonna put that about eight inches below um, the first sinker. Again, nothing too fancy with the tying of the knots. Just putting it on the spider wire. Putting it down your line, right about here, about eight inches. Size doesn't really matter. Um, I just prefer eight to six inches. And just pull it all the way through your line. 
and then do it two more times so it's like a three knot. Pull it all the way tight. And one last time. Pull it all the way through. And then once you got the third one, pull on your line in the bottom of the hook and pull it tight. So now it's when you set the hook, it'll pull it, it'll be nice and tight. that again another eight to six inches below the other hook put that right on through so about right here from the distance of the other two and the good thing is once you get that first line knot in you can actually slide this hook up and down just by pulling it and you can adjust it better so we're going to put it, like I said, about eight to six inches away, so that right, that right there is perfect. So you make your second and third knot now. And once you get the second knot, you can't move it. So it's really important to move it the first knot you put on it. The first time. Then once you got that third, like the last one, grab the line, grab the hook, and pull. That just helps when you set the hook. It's not going to adjust the, the hook's going to be in the same spot. It's not going to move around. Next, get your third hook. Again, six to eight inches. Same thing, three knots. Always using three knots on this combo, just because you don't want your, your weight to get ripped off, your hook to get ripped off, anything like that at all. So just tying basic, basic knots. Nothing fancy needed for suckers, or carp, or catfish. All works the same. Get another one hundredth ounce egg sinker on the bottom. Put that right through. About that far away from that last hook, six to eight inches. And tie in three knots. You want to make sure it's aligned at the corner so it won't catch any sticks or nothing. And it'll cast it in the water. Now second knot, third knot, and then just pull it tight. Grab the weight, grab this line, and pull it tight. on this right so it doesn't uh, break off or anything like that so leave a little bit of access so about that much right here and just cut it like that as you can tell the access is right there that just stops it from when a fish pulls or if it gets cut up on a rock it's not gonna rip it right off it's got a lot of room to play so put the knife down next I'm gonna show you the rod holder got it around here somewhere Pull down real quick so that the reel doesn't get under. And you just put your body weight and push down. Push down a little bit harder so it gets in really good. You want to test it to make sure that's not going to pull out. So if you're bothering with another fish on another pole, you want to make sure that pole is going to go in the water. So we're watching the pole now. Push it right on through. Put as much as you can before you move your hand off that ball. 
keep pushing and pushing. Once you can't push no more, release the, the, your finger off the head of the hook and pull up on the actual worm through the line. So you're just going to rip it right on through the line and it's just going to go right up through the line. Next, grab back where the ball was or any part of the hook actually, it'll work, and just slide it the rest of the way up. Now if it gets off hooked a little bit in some areas, that's okay. Um, it's not a problem because mostly you're just worried about that, that, that sight for the fish that's going to walk away. So just keep pulling up as much as you can and keep pulling that worm on through the hook. Once you get the worm all the way up, a little access is fine, like just like a hand on this. I'm not really going to worry about that. Once you get it all the way, see the hook's not even showing barely. You just pull the line tight and it makes it nice, fat, and juicy. Next, same thing with the other one. Pull them back, get the worm, right through the head. Just go right on through, holding that ball down on the hook so you can put as much as you can fit on there and then pull up the line. Yeah, we space these apart just so the fish, when they travel in the rivers, they might not be down just the middle or the left side. So we try to put one pull on each side. One's on the left, one's in the middle, and one's on the far right. So spread them apart evenly. It'll give you the best chance for success. Pull them nice and tight. Pop it on down. But make sure your pulls are set tight and your drag's high. Otherwise, you could lose your fish. Now that we got it all baited up, we're going to cast it out. It's really important that you give it the line a lot of room here, because otherwise it's just going to get tangled up in a mess. Um, you give it some line, sway it back, and cast it out forward. Once it's cast it out, pull it a little bit so the line will pull in the water, get it straightened out. Tuck that right in there with your rod holder. Now watch the line in the pole. You want that pole tip to be a little bit bent, so it'll set the hook when the fish bites. So now that it's bent a little bit, the line's nice and tight in the water, the sinkers are on the ground, so when a fish comes by, the, the, the pole will bend down and the, the rod holder will make it bend right back up, so your fish will pretty much be hook set, but always make sure you hook set when you get the fish, pull it out and keep the line tight. Um, the last um, really good suggestion I have, which you've seen in the video, having this weighty net makes your success so much better, especially battling big fish like steelhead, pike, carps, cats, anything. Just being able to have this on you, your hands free, I can really go. We're going to show you how to pull out your poles when you check them. I mean, if you haven't got bites in a while, you want to recheck, make sure you have your bait. So you can see the poles, they're lined up on the bank right here. Uh, this one's the closest one to us, so we're going to pull this one out first. Just because when you reel in, the river's pulling your line that way, you don't want them to all tangle up. So we're just going to pull up like this. Nice and slow and even, making sure that line isn't going to get caught on the, the sticks. Pulling them up like that, and we're just going to sit them right here until we're ready to cast them all back out again. There's that one. Nice and slow, making sure you're not getting caught up on the rocks or the, the trees or anything like that. See, this one might have got played a little bit, so we're just going to fix this worm. Put the worm all the way up on the hook again. Perfect. He's got one on right now. It's light enough, you can pull it right on up. So you can just go ahead and pull it on up. Now the line looks like it was sitting for a while, but... Ooh, he's wrapped up in the road. Yeah, go ahead and pull that up here. Now it is hooked in the mouth, but it is also tangled up. So we're just going to get that all on out. Oh, it actually <laughs> unbangled it, for us. So he's just going to unhook it, and we're going to throw it back since it's nice and small. It's got plenty of time to get bigger in the river. 